Hi everyone, I'm Lynn from Finds of Yesterday and today I'm going to show you 30 different types of beads that you might see when you're out and about shopping. You'll probably recognize some like rhinestones and maybe acrylic beads, but hopefully there's some new ones on my list that you haven't seen before and you'll know to look for them when you're out and about. So let's turn the camera around and I'll show you the 30 styles I chose for you today. All right, here we go. We got 30 bead styles and these are more common ones. There are so many more styles out there than, than I'm presenting to you today, but these are some, some of the more common ones you'll see. So let's jump right in and see what we got here. So first of all, the most popular stone you'll find out there are rhinestones. On the left, you'll see this topaz colored looking rhinestone and on the back it's got gold foil. You'll find rhinestones that are foil backed like this and some that are not. And a lot of times that's because they want the light to come through the stone and for you to be able to see what's all in that stone. And the rhinestones that are foil backed are made to reflect the color. And these are all just plain colors as in the pink ones on the right, them are prong set rhinestones and they come in almost every color you can imagine. The ones on the bottom are called Aurora Borealis and rhinestones. You can shorten it by saying AB rhinestones and they have a iridescent coating on them and they were created by Swarovski in 1955. So you won't find these until after 1955 and you'll find a lot of them and they are gorgeous. Next, we have African glass trade beads. And if you look at these pictures, you'll see how they kind of look matte colored and they're like clay looking, but they're actually powdered glass. They're, they're made in um, Italy, they're Venetian made, and they are used for trading. And they come in various shapes, various sizes, and different colors, a wide variety. And they kind of look a little bit rough. All right, moving on next, we have Bakelite. And Bakelite is a more dense, heavier material. And I used to see a lot of bangles made with this material. It was popular back in the early 1900s from like 1907 to 1940s. And it is a plastic material and it's opaque most of the time, but you will see it in a transparent material, but not completely transparent. It's not usually clear. It's more like a orangish color and there is a wide variety. As you see in the middle here, there's swirls of colors like greens and oranges put together and it's made with plastic so they could do just about anything. But the color goes all the way through the material. It's not just coated in that color. If, if you can tell that the color is all the way through the bead, you should be able to tell if it's Bakelite or not. If not, you can test it with Simichrome polish. If you use a Q-tip and put some Simichrome polish on it, it'll come out like a smoky color, like tobacco color, and then you'll know. Moving on, we have camphor glass. And this is a glass that's been etched, and you can see the little facets inside of it to give it a decorative touch. And this was a popular glass during the Art Deco time, and even earlier, from like the 1850s to the 1930s, and it came back again during the Art Deco revival at the end of the 1900s. It is usually a translucent glass, so you can see that starburst effect that it has, but it does come in some colors, as you see the pink on the right. Cat's eye is an interesting stone slash glass slash plastic. It, it's, it's made with synthetic materials and it also is a stone. So sometimes it's a little bit hard to tell what's what, but the cat's eye has a like a whitish line in the middle. And when you move, it follows you. Like you look at it in different lights, that line moves with you. So that's one way to tell. And if it's a synthetic material, sometimes it has more of a, a smoother line. It, it's not real distinct. So that's one way to tell. 
All right, we've got celluloid. Celluloid, the most common color for celluloid is this ivory tone. It does come in colors like on the right side, but it also can be carved. It's very, very lightweight. It's plastic, but it's a lot lighter than Bakelite. And again, it could be colored any color, but the most common is ivory. Next is cloisonne and champlive. The, the picture on the left with the turquoise beads on it are, are cloisonne, and they are actually made with wires. They take gold wires and wrap the wires in a design on a base bead, and then they fill in with enamel powder, and then they fire it, and then they sand it down, and they do this in layers, and they keep doing that until the, the bead is completely smooth. And as you can see, it is they are smooth, and they have these intricate designs in them. The Champlive on the right, as you can see in the close-up picture, they have more of indentions. So they it's the same type of technique, but they don't fill in all the areas. And they leave the gold foil to show through. So it has a kind of a, not a rough texture, but a, it's an uneven texture to it. It's not smooth like the ones on the left. So that's the difference between cloisonne and Champlive. Next we have Dragon's Breath. I love Dragon's Breath. It has like a, let's say, Dragon's Breath look to it. When you turn the stone in different lights, it changes color. It's kind of like a fire look to the inside of it in certain lights. And it has like a peachish, orangish, like outside undertone. I don't know how to explain that. It, like the outside of it's kind of an orange color or peach color, pink undertones. And then it's got gold flecks inside of it that reflect light. And that's what gives it that, that dragon's breath look. And if you look at it from the underside, like the bottom right, it has this peach kind of glow to it. It's, you can't see through it, but it has that glow to it. So hopefully you can tell them beads when you're, when you see them. They, they were popular back in the 1900s, um, from 1900 to 1914 ish. Next we have Easter egg cabochons. These are known by Juliana to be Easter egg cabochons. They, they have a confetti glittery, they're full of color. Um, look to them and they kind of remind you of Easter time with the Easter eggs. These particular cabochons are known by Juliana. Next we have fruit salad or some people call it tutti frutti. So these are plastic or glass. They can be either or and the ones on the left are probably plastic look and they kind of have seams so they're probably plastic and the ones on the right are plastic but the ones in the middle are glass this particular one is made by trafari and that's one of their duets and it has the bright colors to it the reds the bling, the blues the green jewel tones and that was popular with trafari they did do a lot of fruit salad stuff but fruit salad is actually fruit pieces made with plastic. Next we have givre, which is one color inside another color. So it's usually only two-tone and you'll see blues, reds, and they, it looks like there's a bead inside of the bead. That's about the only way for me to explain it. Um, it has a three-dimensional look to it and it can be any color inside of any color. Next we have Gripoi, which is a little bit more difficult of a process. It's poured inside the metal frame. So these pieces were actually made by the piece. Like there wasn't a whole bunch of cabochons made and then it was put into the piece. They take the one piece and they take molten glass and pour into each section and it is cooled 
and then uh, forms this finished piece. You'll since the process is so time consuming, it's only done by high end designers like Chanel. So you're not going to find Grippoy out there very often. And if you sell jewelry, you do not want to use this name unless you know for sure that it that's what it is because it's a very distinguished technique that gets mixed up a lot. If you look at the underside of it, which is the middle picture, you'll see that the texture is kind of rough because that's how it ended up after it cooled. Now there is some pieces like I believe the one on the left where they pour into the metal frame and then they take them metal framed glass pieces and solder them together and make the finished brooch or necklace or whatever. So that's two variations of the same thing. But you'll see that the, the glass goes all the way to the edge. And if it's a high end name, you might consider it to be Grippoi. Next is iris glass. And this is clear transparent glass, but it has a lot of shades of blues, greens, and pinks inside of it. It is a check made glass and it just has this really pretty glow of colors to it. It's almost 3D looking as well. Next we have Japanese Tensha beads. These look like cloisonne beads, but they're definitely different because they're not made with the gold wires. These are made with a decal. They put a decal on the bead and then they cover it with an acrylic glaze. So you can kind of tell they're, they're obviously cheaper made than the cloisonne. That is a lot of steps. They're called Tensha beads. Next we have lamp work beads. Lamp work beads can be found in so many shapes and sizes and colors and varieties because they're all individually made by the work of a, an artist. And she sits behind a torch and makes the she or he, and they make these beads individually. And each one is slightly different. And they made with little beads on them. They can be smooth on the outside, like the little heart on the top. They can be round, they can be cylindrical. Um, there's so many different varieties that you'll find in this type of bead. Next we have electroplated lava beads. Now don't get these mixed up with the the black lava beads that are actually made from lava or, or hardened lava. To look like lava beads, they have little indentions and texture to them, and but they're coated in an iridescent coating of some sort. And they kind of almost look like confetti beads, but they, they also call these candy glass. So they do look like a hard piece of candy as well. But they're textured, so you can kind of get that idea. It might be lava beads if it has that texture to it. Next, we have lucite or acrylic. It's, they're both plastic, and lucite is usually clear, and it can be colored as well. Um, I tend to use, when I'm listing my items, I tend to put lucite if it's clear and acrylic if it's colored. And that doesn't mean that's the answer to it. That's just how I do it. It can have different types of things inside of it as well. But most of the time you see it, it's like a solid plastic bead. So this is a pretty common one. Um, you'll see it a lot. It can be faceted can be smooth. It's done in a variety of ways. Next is marbled glass, which is pretty straightforward. It's a glass that has marble marbleizing. It can come in any color of glass, you know, that, that, that that's ever been made. And they put a little darker shade or a black or a different color just to give it a marbled look. That one's pretty easy to detect. This next one gets mixed up a lot. This one is called Margarita. And what that means is it's the shape, the shape of the bead. It's a scalloped flower shape, as you see on the left here. And it comes in a variety of colors. You can find it 
in a lot of different brooches and necklaces as well, but it, it has that scalloped flower shape to it. Next we have another straightforward one. This is milk glass. It's white. It's made with into bracelets, into brooches, earrings, necklaces, just about everything. Pretty common. And it's opaque. You cannot see through it. Next is Millie Fiori beads. And these are glass. They are tiny little rods that are melted together to make a, des a bigger design. So they're, they're little tiny glass flowers. And you can see they blend it with lots of other things like glitter, aventurine, just any other types of gl colored glass. And it comes in a lot of shapes, sizes, and varieties. But it's, if you see the tiny little flowers, that's usually Millie Fiori. Next is molded glass. Now this gets mixed up with Grapoi a lot of times. Molded glass is like a cabochon where it's completely rounded on top and it's poured into a mold and then put into the piece. Costume jewelry designers use this technique, not the high-end ones like the Grapoi ones like um, Chanel. They used the high-end techniques for their pieces of jewelry and the costume designers that mass produce jewelry use the molded glass technique. It's made to look like Rapoi, but it is definitely a separate thing. So these are held in, you can see by prongs, so you can tell that they are more like a cabochon. Then we have Moon Glow, which is an acrylic bead or glass, and it has like a pearlized look to it. It's not like the cat's eye where it has a line. This has more of a circle and it just kind of moves around as you look at the bead in different lights. It's pretty straightforward as well. And it comes in just about any color you can imagine. Next we have Opalite. Which, which is a synthetic opalescent glass, and this is made to look like opals. It does have more of a translucent look than your typical opals, but it can be more opaque at times, like the necklace on the right. It's a little more opaque than the stones in the middle, but these are usually glass, but they can be resin at times. They're made with an opalescent glass and a metal mix. Next is Rivoli glass, and this basically is a pointed rhinestone. It's a reversed rhinestone. So they take the point of a rhinestone and put it on the top. And it comes in a variety of colors, and it basically refers to the shape. Next we have Safrite. Safrit, sorry. It is a Czech glass, and it has this bluish like a hazy bluish look to it. It's created by fusing real gold with a sapphire colored blue glass. And that's what gives it this hazy blue look. And it's just gorgeous. It is something you might want to keep an eye out for because it is, it is collected by many jewelry collectors. So if you find any out there, you might want to pick it up. It's a really pretty blue glass. Next, we have Thermoset, which is popular, and it's in a lot of pieces, mostly by Coro and Lisner. They like to make a lot of their pieces in this type of plastic. And you can see it's kind of like the moon glow, like the, the necklace on the top. That's actually considered Thermoset moon glow. And it can be solid where it doesn't have that pearlized glow to it. And the pink kind of has a pearlized look to it. The green, not so much, and the red, not so much. So you can see the variations of Thermoset. Then we have uranium beads, which uranium glass is always popular. It glows under black light. That's one way to tell. When you're looking at it, when you don't have a black light on hand, it still kind of has a little bit of a glow to it. It's kind of an iridescent yellowish green color 
So keep your eye out for these because there is collectors for this type of thing. And a lot of times in rhinestones, you'll find it in brooches. If you happen to have a little black light flashlight, you can shine it over all of the brooches you have and you might be surprised what pops out. So uranium beads, definitely something to look out for. Then we have watermelon glass beads. So watermelon refers to the color of the stone. It is green around the outside and pink on the inside, just like a watermelon. And you can find these in the regular rhinestones or a Rivoli rhinestone or a Margarita rhinestone, which you see on the left. So it, is, it refers to the color. It has like a green on the outside and pink on the inside. Then we have wedding cake beads. Think icing on a cake. That's what these look like. They have a base core, usually white, and then they have adventurina glass or gold. It's like glittery looking, swirled around it. That's usually a sign it was made in Italy. And they can have little forget-me-not flowers on them and other little designs and they do not have a white coating inside the hole. That's one way to tell. But you can also tell by how the glass is wrapped around the rod when it's being made. And that's considered a wedding cake bead. So that's the 30 different beads that I wanted to go through with you today. Hopefully you'll see these when you're out and about. And I hope it helps a little bit so you can identify your beads on your new jewelry. And thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you on the next one.